What's up guys, Agent here again with the third of our five part series of videos on how to get started in vet trials and what to expect from vet trials. This particular video is going to be geared towards you healers out there who kind of want to know how to best prepare for vet trials and kind of what to expect from uh, vet trials groups. So everything in this video is going to be very specific towards healers. If you kind of want more generic information, I cover that in the first video of our series. So make sure to watch that first and then come back here to kind of get all everything you need to know that is healer specific. So I won't be covering kind of how to join vet trials and kind of generic what to expect. Uh, again, this is going to be very, very healer specific in terms of the content that I'm going to be talking about. So. First thing, starting off here, uh, when you first want to join a vet trials group is your gear. So gear is probably the most important thing that uh, groups look for when they are looking for a healer. There are going to be five sets that you're going to want to pick up. I'm going to list them in order of priority. So the first one I'm going to mention here is going to be the one that you absolutely need to get before you even think about joining a vet trials team. And the fourth and fifth ones and so on, you know, uh, you can pick them up if you have the time, if you want to farm them, um, but they're not absolutely necessary uh, depending on the specific group that you're trying to run with. So the first set that you're going to want to pick up is going to be Vest Vint of Ola Rime. This comes from the Cloudrest trial, so you will need to have access to the Somerset expansion. Now, you will want to have all the Rime because of that major courage. It has largely supplanted Spell Power Cure as the source of major courage. Um, all the Rime doesn't have nearly as many drawbacks as Spell Power Cure does, so you'll find that a lot of Vet Trials group are gearing more towards having one heal in all the Rime, so that way you can get the second healer to run two different sets rather than doubling up on Spell Power Cure. Ola Rime is definitely a must-have if you want to get into sort of progression style guilds. Uh, for more casual vet trials guild, you can probably go with SPC, Spell Power Cure. Um, however, Ola Rime is still going to be significantly superior, and if you ever want to get uh, beyond just running vet trials casually, you will need to pick up Ola Rime at some point. So I do just highly recommend just getting that Somerset expansion and getting a set of Ola Rime. You don't have to get the perfect version, you can just get the imperfect version. It's perfectly fine. The five pieces are exactly the same between the two of them. Second set you're going to want to pick up is going to be Infallible Aether. This comes from any of the three Craglorn trials, so that's Ethereum Archive, Hellraw Citadel, or Sanctum Ophidia. So just run any of those three trials on normal or even on vet, and you'll be able to pick up those pieces there. Uh, so I do highly recommend picking up a Lightning Staff and a Restoration Staff of Infallible Aether, mainly because Old Rime is always going to be on the body for most healer builds. So uh, IA is typically not going to be on the body all the time, uh, so you will want to pick up uh, those two weapons, a Restoration Staff and a Lightning Staff of Infallible Aether. Now Infallible Aether is very strong because of that minor vulnerability debuff that it applies with the 5-piece bonus. Uh, that's an additional 8% damage received, so it really does help boost our DPS so, uh, by a significant margin there. Now, while the Shock Damage Enchant does also provide minor vulnerability, it is not a guaranteed application unless you have a charged staff. Uh, so, just having Infallible Aether there is a little bit more reliable when it comes to maintaining minor vulnerability uptime. It also lasts longer than the Shock Enchant. Uh, so, IA is definitely a very powerful set to use, especially for progression style uh, content. Third set you're going to want to pick up here is going to be Yorvold's Guidance. Uh, this comes from Scalecaller Peak, so you will need to have access to Dragon Bones DLC in order to get this set here. This basically improves the duration of your minor and major buffs that you provide to the group by, I believe, 30%. So, one of the major buffs that you're going to be providing is going to be Major Force due to your use of Warhorn. So, it normally has about a 9.5 second duration, but with the Yorvold's Guidance buff, it jumps up to about 12 seconds, so it's going to be a pretty nice boost to have there. That additional time on Major Force does mean you have a little bit more flexibility when it comes to when you can time out your Warhorn to help improve your Major Force uptime. Uh, beyond that, if you uh, are a Warden Healer and you're using uh, the Mushroom, the Flower, or the Mushroom Heal, that provides minor intellect and minor endurance, so that just improves the duration of that. It also improves your durations of minor and major bending. So Yorval's Guidance is a really nice set to have there. These next two sets that I'm going to mention here are going to be a little bit uh, less necessary, but I would still recommend getting uh, getting them all the same. First one is going to be Worm Cult. This comes from the Vault of Madness dungeon, so this is a base game set here, just like Infallible Aether. 
Worm Coat's nice just because of that 4% additional reduction in Magicka ability cost. Helps out your sustain, help out Magicka DPS sustain. Now it's not quite as necessary, especially for progression style guilds or leaderboard guilds, just because those types of guilds typically run more stamina than Magicka. However, Worm Cult is still a very nice set to have. It helps your sustain, helps tank sustain, uh, which is pretty important overall. The final set here is going to be Mending. This comes only from Ethereum Archive, so you will need to run it, uh, run that trial. It is a base game though. Uh, and so mending just basically reduces the amount of damage that's incoming from boss enemies there are a couple of downsides the, the debuff only lasts for three seconds uh, you have to be within eight meters or, or ten meters i should say of the uh, boss in order to apply it uh, so it's not really all that useful particularly for score running guilds where higher dps is going to be more important however for progression style guilds mending is still a set that they sometimes use there to help reduce the damage that's coming out basically helps improve survivability which in turn kind of helps improve dps a little bit so score running guilds typically they have enough mastery of the content that they're not dying as often but progression style guilds might need that additional uh damage reduction in order to survive uh, certain encounters so I would do recommend picking up Mending if you do want to join a progression style guild. I personally find it to be fairly useful overall in sort of progressing through harder content there. Those are the five sets that you want to pick up. Uh, most guilds will definitely ask for Olorime and Infallible Aether and Your World's Guidance. Uh, some guilds will require you to have Worm Cult and Mending, but it all depends on the guild. So make sure to check out the guild specifics as to what they want their healers to wear. Each guild is going to be a little bit different as to what specific sets they want to run there. And of course, because there are going to be two healers on each trial run, you do want to communicate with your second healer, figure out what sets they're wearing. That way you can coordinate so that way you don't end up doubling up, for instance, on Worm Cult or Olorime. That basically reduces the effectiveness of your healing potential, your, your support potential. Moving on beyond your typical armor sets, you do have some special sets that you're going to want to pick up here. So you have Monster Helm sets, and then you have your Restoration Staff sets. For Monster Helm sets, the first monster helm that I recommend you pick up is going to be Bogdan. This comes from Elden Hollow 2. The very nice heal is basically acts is basically about twice to 2.5 times as strong as a healing spring tick, and it actually procs fairly often just because each individual heal you do has a chance to proc Bogdan. But I like it a lot. It's a base game, it's a really nice heal over time, and it just allows you to focus more on supporting with combat prayer and orbs rather than focusing on pure heals. The second set I recommend you pick up is going to be Earthcore. This comes from um, Bloodroot Forge, so you will need access to the Horns of the Reach DLC in order to grab it. This is a little bit of a controversial Monster Home set because it's such a very strong burst heal with a very long duration. Uh, some people think that uh, guilds are carried by it because it's a very strong burst heal. However, it, even if it is kind of uh, a carry set, it's still a very nice set to have there for that burst heal. It is a very long duration, so you, uh, cool down on that heal though, so you don't want to necessarily depend on it. But when it does come into play, it is very nice to have there, so I do recommend picking that up as well. Now the third Monster Helm set, you don't necessarily have to pick up if you're a progression style guild or if you don't have a lot of stamina, and that's Sentinel of Kugams. This comes from Dark Shade Caverns 1. The heal itself is actually pretty weak, it's a little bit weaker than Healing Springs, but the main draw of Rukugams is the fact that it also returns stamina. Uh, so for those guilds that are running 6 stamina on the, as a DPS, that additional stamina return is very nice for the sustain. It also helps out tank sustain so you don't have to worry about heavy tanking as often. Uh, so you'll find that a lot of higher end guilds are running Rukugams just to help out their stamina DPS sustain a little bit better. Uh, so typically speaking, Stamina Nightblade and Stamina Wardens don't really need that additional sustain, but it is nice to have the additional bit of padding there um, nonetheless. The heal itself, again, is not all that strong. Uh, it's more for the stamina return that you're using with Gobs. And then finally for your Restoration Staff set. So there's two Restoration Staff sets that you're going to want to pick up. The first one's going to come from Dragonstar Arena. Uh, this is in Craglone, so it is base game. This is your master restoration staff. Every time you use healing springs, that first tick will restore some stamina uh, to whoever is nearby. Uh, so from what I've heard, it is currently bugged where it is based on where you are and not where the springs are. I do have to go back and retest it because uh, they did fix this bug a while back, so they might have just reintroduced it somehow. So I do need to double check on that. For now though, just assume that your stamina return from restoration staff Massive Resto is centered around you and not the Healing Spring placement. So this basically is just like a Uh It's basically just helps return stamina back. It helps stamina sustain. It helps let your tank sustain. Uh, so overall, pretty nice 
uh, staff to have, especially for progression style groups that might need that additional sustain uh, compared to more uh, higher end leaderboard running guilds. The second restoration staff set that you're going to want to pick up is going to be the Asylum Restoration Staff. Imperfect or perfect, doesn't really matter which one you pick up. The difference between the two is pretty small overall. Now, the Asylum Restoration Staff, whenever you use Combat Prayer, it will basically reduce the cost of your healing abilities for the next three seconds. So it's really nice to just, you know, be able to throw it on Combat Prayer and then be able to pump out two or three orbs at a reduced cost. Uh, they reduce cost by 27 or 30%, depending on whether you have Imperfect or Perfect, respectively. So it's very nice to have for sustain. So uh, a lot of guilds will typically ask for the very least the Master's Restoration Staff. Not all of them will ask for the Sound Restoration Staff. You'll find that a lot of trial uh, leaderboard guilds, uh, their healers are turning more towards the Asylum Restoration Staff for additional sustain. That way they're able to pump out more orbs. Uh, but either of them are good options. You might also find that some endgame healers actually don't run either of these states. Instead, they kind of just double up instead on a 5-piece bonus. So, for example, in Fable Aether or Yorval's Guidance, that way they have that 5-piece active on both bars rather than just only on one bar. A very common example would be IA, so that way you're basically able to maintain that minor vulnerability debuff uh, a little bit more consistently that way instead of having to rely on going to your back bar to apply IA and then swap them to your front bar to get that special stat effect there so that's pretty much it for in terms of gear that you might be asked to have before you can officially join a vet trial skill in terms of like uh jewelry enchants armor enchants uh things like that guilds don't typically police that all too much you should obviously do some research and just kind of figure out what you want to run in terms of traits and enchants, uh, but there's no really set, set thump, something set in stone. A lot of guilds will just trust the healers are able to kind of research this on their own and basically come up with that on their own themselves. Uh, so don't really worry too much about traits and enchants. It's more about just making sure you have those gear pieces all put together. Now, in terms of what guilds look for in trials healers. So... First, I'll talk about what they look for when you're looking for healers to join, so when you want to join, and then I'm going to be talking about what they look for after you've joined in terms of how you're healing the group itself. So before you join, a lot of different guilds don't really have an objective way of measuring healer performance in order to get them to join and kind of measure up how they stand compared to the rest of the group there. A lot of what healers are judged on are a little bit subjective, or at least there is some level of subjectivity involved here. The three main things that healers are judged on are going to be buffs and debuffs, amount of resources returned, and then healing prowess. So obviously healing prowess doesn't really need much explanation, it's just are people dying, are you able to heal people? Uh, obviously one shots don't count, so it's more of are you healing through any sort of damage over time components, or if we do happen to get hit by uh, an AoE effect or something like that, are you able to heal it up back to full in a somewhat quick manner? Are you be basically, are you be able to react to damage accordingly? Um, in terms of resources returned, uh, this one is, again, pretty straightforward. It's basically how many shards or orbs you're able to shoot out in a given span of time. Uh, basically, are you keeping your DPS and your tanks topped off on resources? Are you getting orbs on cooldown, or do they have to wait and ask for orbs uh, in order to get their resources back? Good healers do not wait for the DPS or tanks to ask them for orbs. They will just shoot out orbs, so that way they are basically being popped on cooldown. Of course, this does vary a little bit between 4-man and 12-man content, uh, but generally speaking, I always like to have at least one orb out in the field at all time, not just for the heal, but again, for that additional uh, resource return there. And finally, buffs and debuffs. So how well are you managing combat prayer? How well are you managing infallible aether, your minor vulnerability uptime? Uh, those are the kind of things that are a little bit more objective because you can clearly go to combat report and be like, okay, Combat Prayer has an 80% uptime, you're doing very well in Combat Prayer. Uh, your Combat Prayer uptime is only 40%. You could really work on getting Combat Prayer uh, uptime a little bit higher. So that's probably the most objective way of measuring uh, basically healer performance. Uh, just how well you're managing your buff and debuff. So uh, different guilds, again, will ask for different sort of cutoff points. So for me personally, uh, if you want to join the progression team for Hellfire Dominion, I'm going to look for at least 70 to 75% Comet Prayer uptime on sort of stack and burn fights. So that Kragler and Trials, for example. Uh, so again, not all guilds will take a look at this. Uh, for example, Mayflower, you do need a reference from an existing a guild member in order to kind of be considered uh, to join the, the guild itself. So just kind of take a look at what each guild is looking for when it comes to uh, how they take in healers. So some 
uh, guild don't even ask for a healer test. They just say, okay, do you have these skills? Do you have these uh, sets? All right, you have them. Good, you're in. Uh, other guilds like Hellfire Dominion are going to be a little bit more involved. You have to do a healer test. You have to do basically a vet DLC trial, uh, vet DLC dungeon with us. So we can kind of measure up how you do with those three kind of measurements like I mentioned before. And then again, there are some guilds like Mayflower where we don't actually take any healers uh, unless they have a reference from somebody in the guild itself. And even at that point, because our main healers have pretty much uh, don't have any intentions of quitting the game anytime soon, it's really hard for us to basically find another. It, basically, there's no open healer spots really except for fill spots. So once you're in the guild, you're basically going to be measured up again based on those three measurements uh, and basically how you improve based on those three measurements. So are people dying less often the longer you're in the trial? Are your buff times going up the more used to mechanics you are? Is your survivability good? Those are the kind of things that uh, raid these look for in their healers. Uh, so for me personally, one of the big things that I notice with healers uh, is resource return. So a lot of healers don't really... Uh, shoot out orbs often enough or sometimes I have to ask for resources uh, in which case uh, you know that's not really good uh, it's not really a good look for healers if, if your tank or dps have to ask resources to to be given out uh, so a lot of raid leads will be taking a look at things like that uh, well healers are typically in short supply so you won't normally be kicked from groups uh, however uh, just like with dps don't assume that your position on a raid team is secure there is always going to be somebody else out there who is better than you who might join that raid group uh, and if a raid lead um, is more concerned about performance over kind of sentimentality or seniority and things like that your position might be jeopardized by a someone who is better uh, than you in terms of maintaining buffs in terms of giving more resources out so you always want to shoot for improvement so the main two things that i recommend you look at in terms of improving yourself while you are doing vet trials is resource return and then buff debuff uptimes so just make sure you have comet prayer up pretty high obviously it's going to vary a little bit depending on the specifics of the fight but the resource return is a big thing it's really huge especially for progression style guilds uh, people tend to die when their resource pools uh, basically hit rock bottom so that's the two main thing that i would recommend you take a look at if you want to improve as a healer just how many resources are you giving out are you able to give out that synergy on cooldown and then your buff debuff uptimes Beyond that, though, there's not really too much else to mention for healers. Obviously, you can want to have all your skills set up, so aggressive warhorn, efficient purge, all your class-specific passives, things like that, your restoration staff passives. Uh, you do want to have all that set in order before you apply, much like your gear sets. Unfortunately, there's a lot of different skills that you're going to want to pick up as a healer, and they're all going to vary depending on your class, so there's not... Uh, there's not enough time in this video to kind of go over it just make sure to check out various build videos to kind of take a look at what other endgame healers are running and kind of base your build off of that so that pretty good concludes this video uh kind of looking over healer specific things for people who want to get into vet trials uh, and vet content there the next video that we're going to be going over is going to be looking at tank specific content so if you're interested in that be on the lookout for that the previous video was on dps and of course the first video was just kind of very generic things uh, about how to get involved in vet trials so that's pretty much it for this video if you guys have any other pieces of advice that you would like to share please feel free to leave them down in the comment section below again if you guys have any questions or comments or concerns again comment section and i will be sure to read those and get back to you Hope you guys found this video informative, and I'll see you guys in the next dungeon.